And we're back with a quick tutorial on X4. And today we're going to be covering factory building. The do's, the don'ts, and first off, let's start with the biggest of biggest don'ts. Don't build a giant mega factory. It just, they don't work as well as you think they're going to work. The problem is construction time. You can only build one chunk of this Teladnum production at a time, which meant if I wanted, say, Claytronics in a hurry, I would have to have cancelled this production and switched over to Claytronics, or I'm just going to have to wait till they produce. And each one of these took about 14 minutes. Then the Claytronics are going to take time. You need to split up the factories into smaller chunks. Smaller chunks of factory means you get more done and you can get more produced. Early on, one big factory may seem like a good idea, but as you get richer and later into the game, it becomes a horrible bottleneck. So what we're going to try and do is cover out how to split your factory up to maximize efficiency while at the same time making it pretty straightforward to expand it as necessary. This is not going to be a shiny tutorial. There is going to be spreadsheets, I'm afraid. Anyway, the two main things to take away from factories is you're going to need two main components. Hull parts, claytronics. Hull parts and claytronics are all you need to build more factory. You also need power, but we're just going to assume you're putting power on everything. So, since we need hull parts and claytronics, and they are the building blocks of pretty much everything, you want to make separate factories for them so you can expand them out rapidly. Of course, you can't just make hull parts out of nothing, you need to have some sort of inputs, and we don't want to make the inputs on this factory, but let's check what they are. Done! Refined metal, graphene, they make hull parts. Antimatter cells, microchips, and quantum tubes make claytronics. We're going to keep it simple, there's going to be extra stuff added on on top here as we go, but we're going to need to be importing all of these items. So we're going to need to put together the factories that make those, though we're not, we can't have them integrate into our hull or clay factories, they've got to be like separate factories back here that feed in. Uh, one second. This is where things become a little bit more about preference. You could make all of this into one giant factory or split it up into five. Personally, I like to make it two separate factories. One is ore and silicon, namely because that's a solid and you, whatever miners you assign out to this can go get both of those materials. There used to be problems in some of the previous versions where miners would get all full up with ore and then would be able to get silicon or vice versa, but that's still sp since been patched out, so it shouldn't be an issue now. That just means all your solid miners go here and all your liquid miners go here. Well, gas, liquid, whatever. You cool anything down enough, it becomes a liquid. So you've got your solids factory with ore and silicon and your liquids factory with hydrogen, methane, and helium. Now you do have to add on some processing here. Everything from ore all the way down to helium requires some basic processing before it can be used for anything. So ore turns into refined metals. You can make teladnum. That is a very specific type of metal that comes, it's only allowed by the teladi. The teladi make that and don't, just don't do it. It's more efficient on energy, but less efficient on ore, meaning you need more ore to make the teladnum. And the teladnum has its own special chains, but it's all the same. It's effectively just that minor change. Don't do it, just stay away. Refined metals, far better long term. Uh, silicon gets turned straight into silicon wafers, and all of these gases down here get turned into antimatter cells, graphene, and superfluid coolant, respectively. The reason I like this, though, is because there's some extra things you can build on top of it. For example, silicon wafers, you can take those, feed them, and just them alone into a machine, and you get out microchips. And microchips are one of the things we need over here. Well, okay, we've got microchips and antimatter cells already, so two of these things have already been taken out. Refined metal has already been provided. Graphene has already been provided. All we really need now is the quantum tubes, and both of these factories are going to be completely fed. Turns out quantum tubes are made from graphene and superfluid coolant, so done. So right there. Uh, that means we've got all these parts being produced here that can now be fed into this to give us the factory we want. However, this is sort of the start-off point. Once you've got all of this running and these four factories churning everything out, you're now getting in claytronics and hull parts in sufficient quantities that, okay, you can sell some off, but more importantly, those parts can be fed back in to just keep making more factory without having to rely on any outside inputs. Unfortunately, we can't just end it there. There is uh, some slight more complications that need to be taken care of if you want to make an all-inclusive factory. You may not want to make all of the components necessary to produce ships, but I thought I would include it here because there's a nice way to expand this out with just one more factory and a few additions to make all of the stuff necessary to start churning out ships. We can make smart chips out of silicon wafers. Directly, you just put down a factory, it turns the silicon wafers into smart chips. Easy peasy. Also, refined metal and silicon wafers can be used to make scanning arrays. So now we've got all of these in, and oh, there's one more thing down here. Plasma conductors. They're actually made out of the same thing quantum tubes are made out of, which makes this very simple. And by just putting those in there, we've effectively knocked out a whole bunch of extra stuff. But there's a few recommendations I'd like to make here at this point, and this, again, these are all recommendations that are just, you can tweak this how you want, but I think this just makes it far easier to get all the production chain through with the least amount of uh, doubling up on where resources go. 
First, easiest and simplest, advanced electronics. These are actually really, really handy for a lot of your production and you don't need to add anything, any other inputs here to the uh, the clay factory. It just, all of these can all be produced from those three materials without having to add anything new at all. Simple, easy, useful. For the whole factory over here, we can quickly add in advanced composites. That's a no brainer. It takes refined metals and graphene to make, so no point not putting it there. Missile components are going to be a little bit controversial in that, well, while you can put them here, they're usually better off coming into the fifth factory we're going to make, but considering you can make them here from the hull parts and advanced composites, it seems almost like it's sort of free. Depends how much hull part production you need. The next choice is going to be a little bit more awkward to justify, but that's engine parts. Engine parts require refined metal and antimatter cells. And the reason I want to put engine parts here is if you put them here, you no longer require refined metal on any of the other production chains. After this point, refined metal has been used in everything it needs to be. Only downside is you're putting antimatter cells into this factory, which is the same as the clay factory. Both of them get used. It's just Claytronics takes such a wide variety of materials, this kind of messes you up on that front. But by doing this, you've basically got, oh, about 70% of all of the components you're ever going to need. And hull parts and Claytronics and advanced electronics, well, you're going to need a lot of those. So these are going to be the two main factories you're going to be pumping from. But then now that all of this is done, we need one final factory. And this one is where you put together all of the final level components. It's You're talking about missile components, weapon components, drone components, anti like there's a whole bunch of components that are going to go in here. Uh, let me just dump it in. So there. Uh, we're going to need weapon, drone, antimatter converters, turret components, shield components, and field coils. These are all the remaining items we need to get done, and sticking them into a fifth and final factory is, well, the most convenient way of doing it. Let's just bite the bullet and show what it's going to take to produce all of these. Um, actually, let's move that back a little bit, and maybe expand that out a tiny tad. Right, so the fifth factory is going to be the components factory for, well, the reason that everything in there except for the antimatter converters and the field coils is components. And I mean, they're probably antimatter components and field components, whatever. However, hull parts, plasma conductors, like a lot of these things here, they don't show up anywhere else. Engine parts are actually produced from over here. This is why we put the engine parts back in this section. Otherwise, we'd need to have antimatter cells over here as well. Just feels simpler to cut them off there and refine metal. So... Perfect. Scanning arrays actually get imported from over here, so they're only used once. The only thing that's actually getting used multiple times across multiple factories, as in redundant usages, is the microchips. They show up in the clay factory, they also show up in the fifth factory. Same problem with quantum tubes, they also show up in the clay factory. Yet there's no real way to avoid that because claytronics, like I said already, they just they use too much of the too much materials that are spread around everywhere. And the only the third thing is antimatter cells. So these three items here are the only things that end up in other factories and getting spread out more than they should. I know, this started out so simplistically and now it just looks like an absolute mess. Hold on while we just refine this down a tiny scooch. This here is a stripped down version that's the basics of what you need to just get started. For hull parts, all you need is refined metal and graphene. So long as you can get those up and running, you've usually got a little bit of income. I would not consider the, this the best early income from factories, but if you're just looking for pure hull parts and a little bit of stable income, this can work out great. Claytronics, I would leave that till second, namely because it requires antimatter cells, superfood, coolant, quantum tubes, and it's just way more complicated and requires way more buildup. However, advanced satellites offer a different method to profit. You see, advanced satellites are an incredibly good way to make money. Uh, in many places, about mid-game, you're going to have enough money to do something silly, like go into a place and buy a hundred advanced satellites for about four million. Uh, four point two, depending. They usually be about forty-two to forty-five grand in a lot of places. Then what you can do is, you can then take those hundred satellites you've just bought and sell them at any shipyard, pretty much, for about sixty-four grand a pop, which means you're going to be profiting quite substantially. Oh, you'll be pulling in somewhere between two to two and a half million on each run. In fact, there is the odd place that will even buy, sell them for more or buy them off you for an awful lot more, bringing you in about, oh, let's see, about three and a half million. That's incredibly efficient. Now, to make these things is actually not that hard. If we'll check this starbase here, it actually requires advanced electronics and scanning arrays. And... Getting your access to those with your factories is actually pretty handy with the current setup we've we've got. Because of the way we have designed this, well, getting scanning arrays is pretty handy considering they basically come from silicon. And you can get them on your solids factory pretty quick. And the accompanying advanced electronics go straight under the clay factory and they only require the same inputs as claytronics, so you don't even have to make any changes. 
you can basically slot in scanning arrays and advanced electronics into your factories quite handily, then sell them to equipment docks. Equipment docks will sell the advanced satellites for less than the shipyards will. This is how you're able to make such a stupid profit. It's because the shipyards are by default designed to sell equipment for lower prices than the shipyards. And the shipyards don't have any kind of, well, none of these things have any markup on them. They either buy or sell them at the exact same price. And since there's no markup or markdown, you're able to just make huge profits by overstocking the actual paranet or any equipment dock with the advanced electronics and the scanning arrays, which drives down the price of the advanced satellites and then selling them to the shipyards. The hard part will be finding enough shipyards to sell them all to because you'll keep driving down the prices as you stock them up with advanced electronics. Or if you'll notice, they, not a lot of advanced electronics floating around the place. So it'd be a good idea to limit your sale of those items to make sure that the only way places are able to gain access to them would be your sale of them through advanced satellites of which you'd be creeping just enormous amounts of money. The eventual hope would be that you would upgrade to getting your own equipment dock style uh, thing. It costs about 34 million to buy the blueprint. But once you do, you can make your own advanced satellites and make huge amounts of cash. So with those basics out of the way, you can just add on these four factories into your uh, little build. And that allows you to progress straight on to producing masses of ships. So this whole thing is quite flexible in allowing you to go straight for either the advanced satellite route to churn out as much money as you want, or the whole play parts to electronics route if you're looking to go the more builder it's just, I prefer to have the option available depending on how the map rolls, how the enemies come out, and what way you want to go with this. And it still gives you the option to mass build stuff very, very quickly. Now, of course, you will still need a shipyard and ugh, uh, spoiler territory here on uh, player HQs. If you've never heard of player HQs, you may want to skip for the uh, skip to this timestamp. The player HQ, I would advise you to chuck on a shipyard too. If you get a shipyard on it, what you can do is you can teleport the, the, the actual player HQ around the map, and so long as you make sure that it's able to stock up on these components, so long as you're within about five, five tiles or so of your fifth factory, and, well, your whole factory, you can then get all those components stocked up onto your mobile shipyard that you can then teleport around the place. Just very handy. Or you could just straight up make your own shipyard. Your call. For timestamping purposes, these things highlighted in blue are things you only need to start producing once you want ships. Everything else that is unhighlighted is stuff you want to either make advanced satellites or basically hit hulk parts and electronics which you use to make factories. Then the billion dollar question, where do you put your factories? And the answer is 18 billion. Namely because this has the best source of methane inside a system that's not currently being contested outside of the void over here. The void usually has slightly better methane. However, the void does have those radioactive rocks that kill you in it, uh, so your choices really. There's a bunch of sectors belonging to the Xenon that have better methane, but yeah, you're not going to be taking those out in the early game. So I definitely recommend 18 billion just for the easy access to methane because that's required for graphene, which is required for hull parts and will be the biggest bottleneck. You will run out of methane before you run out of any other material. The central location doesn't hurt, and as well as that, you are just one short gate trip away from the main highway that goes all the way around the map. This is good if you've got some medium traders to do your trading. Uh, one thing I would advise though, when it comes to your miners, you're going to start off with medium miners because you're going to be poor, but the moment you start making any decent money, switch to large miners. The reason being, the moment those CAC show up, they'll just start butchering your miners horrifically. I lost several until I just started using large miners. Their shield regen is so high, the CAC can't get through the shields, and they can just shrug it off until you get around to murdering them. An additional advantage of splitting up the factories this way is means mining outposts are far more viable. For example... This place over here, Tarka's Ravine, has about, ooh, 567 million methane. So what you can do is you can set up an outpost right about here in Fires of Defeat. That is exactly one, two, three, four, five sectors away. And then you can set up your little mining outpost here, which will literally just be your mining outpost for methane and the other two gases if you want. But realistically, if you're just out here, you're probably just looking for methane. And considering that is one, two, three, four sectors away, your people can mine it, bring it back here, refine it to graphene. And then your traders from here or from your factory can then mule it all the way back to the center. Well, once it's turned into graphene, it makes it much smaller and easier to transport. So, in theory, with a few well-placed mining outposts, you can strip mine huge sectors of the map. Well, you can't technically strip mine, this stuff grows back. But it does give you access if you want to go super big on your factories. Though then, you might want to start looking into doubling down on some of the intermediate components, hull parts, stuff like that. But uh, it just, it gives you flexibility, let's just say. I have mentioned six factories several times, and I haven't actually 
short with the six factories, and it's food. Food is a, a multiplier. It Basically, you build on some accommodation onto your factories, and then you feed them medical supplies and whatever food they prefer, and the factories become more efficient in a nightmarish way that makes calculations almost impossible. But they are useful. It's just not so useful if you build in the food and medical production into the factory itself because of the time taken for they instead could be, you know, producing more hull parts or something like that. And they're not useful early on because, well, usually the bonus is somewhere between 20 to 40 percent, which means you probably want to have like five or six hull parts factories already running before this is even going to become potentially viable. And then there's a slow buildup of people, so actually you're better off probably waiting until you've got about 10 hull parts factories before you even think about throwing on food. And then it's introducing a whole other production chain, so you're probably going to wait till you've got about 15 or 20. However, let's just have a quick go through the numbers to show you why it's so complicated and why you're probably going to wait until you've got about, say, 20 hull parts, 15 claytronics, and, and probably gone pretty deep into it before you even think about tapping into the food section. This is the X4 calculator. X4-game.com. There's a few calculators out there. This is the one I use, but yeah, help yourself. The way it works is, so long as you have a biome that can hold people, you'll see we have the... Workforce capacity up here is 1800, and the current needed value is 17,210. Each building has a prerequisite amount of people, and if enough people are in it, it gets a bonus. Well, actually, any people are in it will give it a bonus, but uh, there's a maximum amount, maximum bonus, blah, blah, blah. So what we want to do here is see how it works out and how the numbers shake out and how it affects the percentages. And the answer is really complexly. For example, here's medical supplies. This is getting a 128% efficiency bonus for having enough workers. Nostrop oil production, 120% efficiency. Well, that's confusing. And then Sunrise Flowers, which feed into both Nostrop oil and medical supplies, has 128% efficiency. Spices has 140% efficiency, and water has 143% efficiency. How's energy sales doing? 143. So as you can see, the numbers are all over the place, and it's just too complicated to work out without a pen and paper and a bunch of time, or just use a calculator. Far simpler in my opinion. This is, of course, is going to mess things up. This is why I'm not going to give you any hard and fast numbers for production, because honestly, the moment you start introducing people, it all goes just to hell. Now, I know that did sound harsh, but realistically, you do want to start including housing. As soon as it's reasonably optimal, throwing a few extra in, as long as you've got the money and the spare production cycles, go for it. They definitely increase the product production of a factory. However, for your main factories, factory. or the main five, I would only build the, the biomes. That's it. You just want biomes going in there. There are two main choices when it comes to building these, and it's basically the Argon population and the Teladi. The reason the Argon are popular is because it requires the least amount of ice, which means building the factory requires the least amount of miners because you're needing less ice. The Teladi are the second most popular on the grounds that their, uh, their population structures, these large biomes, are the fastest to build, which means they interrupt your main factories the least. So if you want to have the least interruption to your production cycles and make sure your productive factories stay productive, then yeah, you can get these biomes down faster. However, once the biomes are built, the argon work out slightly cheaper in the long run. Your call. Much of a muchness, to be honest. Personally, I lean towards the Teladi because I want them built faster and they're a bit cheaper. As a final update to the snapshot, I've thrown in the food and actually used the numbers. I'm not giving numbers for anything else because it really does depend on what you're going for and what you're trying to build. But for the food factories, it took me forever to figure out how, well, what personnel consumed and all that stuff. So I started to throw all the information here for ease of use. This would be an optimum size factory if you're going for, say, about 80 medical supplies, 30 nostrop oil, etc. And there's all the supporting stuff required. Assuming you have enough biomes attached to keep everyone fed, it can support an additional 172,000 workers. Now, you can scale it up or down as you see fit. But from this, you should be at least able to work out how much food and medical supplies everyone is going to need. And that is the end of the factory building tutorial, which contained not a lot of factory building, I will admit. If you do want to build a mega factory, you can go for it. Just be advised, something this stupidly oversized, while mildly fun at the start, will become a bit of a chore later on. I, I think I, I left this running for eight hours overnight one time in SATA mode, and when I came back, it still was not finished all of the queued up production. So just be aware, you will have to spend a lot of time in game, and that was with a pretty beefy machine running it at the time. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here before I waffle on even more. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.